It's a great song, but I don't know it. Everybody, welcome. Here we go. Happy Monday. It is Matt Connerton Unleashed, and we are live from the studios of WMNH 95.3 FM in glorious downtown Manchester, New Hampshire. Ah, a little damp and rainy, but it's glorious. Also on Comcast 97 if you're in Manchester, and hello to all of our online listeners across the nation and around the globe. Uh, today is a Monday, August 7, 2023, and I'm not alone. Jenny is here at the news desk. I am present on this dreary looking day. I want the sun. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, we you know, we need we haven't had much rain. We need the rain. Stop <laughs> it. I'm kidding. You got that I know who you got that from. Yes, J Fed is in yes. the uh, chat room saying the same thing in Vermont. Uh, uh-huh. we are getting some much needed rain. J-Fed yeah. is trouble with the capital T. That's right. Maybe. Uh welcome everybody. Uh I believe uh <laughs> In a few minutes, we're going to have a rare uh, Monday entertainment report from our friend EZG. Yes. Uh, we usually do it Thursdays, but uh, last yeah. Thursday was kind of a big news day. Uh, we also opened the show today with a new track from Grimrock. And if you're, uh, for those of you watching online, you can see I am wearing the shirt. Uh, he was very kind and sent uh, Jenny and I shirts uh, for supporting his music. And uh, that is the brand new track from Grimrock called Faded. That doesn't come out until September. Yeah. So we have it before anybody. You will not anybody. hear. You will not hear that anywhere else. It's so cool. So uh, we appreciate that very much. And uh, we have another world radio premiere coming up at 5 p.m. today. Yep. At the top of the hour. Uh, the new uh, Vero G song, Gone Too Soon. Uh, so we're going to play that uh, at that point. And then uh, we're going to have her on Skype and she'll talk to us. She's been on the show, I think, a couple of times now. Yeah. Um, she's great. She yeah, does yeah. a lot of things. She does. She she's, does a lot of things. She's very busy. The song, beautiful song, very uh, sad story behind it, though, as as uh, one would know from the title, of course, Gone Too Soon. That certainly implies that. And there's even a short film, which I haven't had a chance to. Have you have you watched it yet? Have you had a chance to watch the I have uh, not watched short the film? film yet. There is. A, it's on YouTube. It's about, I think it's about 15 minutes long. So we're going to uh, check that out later. But um, uh, very, uh, very interested to hear that story. So we'll. We'll play that track uh, as we uh, when we approach 5 p.m. and then we'll talk with her and then probably at the end of the segment we'll play the radio edit of uh, the track uh, "Toxic," which was the last song of Vero G that we uh, gave a world radio premiere to uh, back in I want to say April, March or April earlier this year. So, so lots coming up. There is no better place to be in the afternoon than on Matt Connaughton Unleashed with independent artists from all over the globe. Mm. I love it. I, I love yes. I love all the music that we... I have like an entire playlist of just indie music. I haven't turned on regular music in a while, actually. Yeah. Um, I, I love it. I love it. I'm a big fan of uh, Jerry Robinson, I'll tell you. He, he, you know that guy. He posted a, a video earlier. We just want to uh, express some support for Jerry, by the way. I guess somebody else online is... Giving him a hard time. and yeah, uh, somebody was harassing him. I know, I know. Uh, somebody's very jealous, I think. Apparently. But uh, I think this might be our friend uh, Easy G on the line. Is that you? Yes, it is. And I'm going to do a little spiel here. What do we talk about? L.A. night. Yeah. yeah. Manchester, New Hampshire, acknowledge me. Now, uh, you, good, you huh? smushed them. Easy G, are you uh, calling us from inside a glass? Uh, no, I got this new phone. Can you hear me? Are you on speaker? No, I'm not. That's a new phone, huh? Is it uh, a, a Cricket Wireless uh, phone? Or a, a... No, no, it's a uh, what's the phone? mobile I, I put the call volume way up. Can what's, you hear me? What's the phone for old people? The uh, the jitterbug? Jitterbug. Or uh, what's that? Uh, Stop it. What did I used to see those Wait, ads for? I just for? helped you. Con- consu- oh, consumer, consumer cellular? Is that <laughs> a consumer? 
Are, are you calling us from your jitterbug phone? With last time I called like a month ago, you couldn't hear me that well because the phone was falling apart. It actually. Can you put your 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 phone a little closer to your mouth? Oh, maybe it might be too close. That might be the problem. Maybe, maybe a little further maybe it's away. Too then. close. Yeah. 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 Too close. The closest it's gonna get. You can't hear me. Actually, it sounds better now. It does sound better. It's not that we oh, couldn't. It's a cell phone, you know, they're not 100 percent reliable. No, you moved your head again. My phone is 100 percent reliable. How dare you? <laughs> Oh, I think this phone would be better because the, uh, the like I said, that phone was falling apart, and the phone died, and uh-huh. and they had doctor appointments. So it's been like a month. You should have brought your phone to the doctor. Are you wearing a muffler? Are you cold? Oh, maybe that's it. Are you wearing a scarf? And then it's covered your face. No, the only guy who wears a scarf is the MJF uh, uh, guy. Right there. <laughs> Wherever you got it right now, hold it. Yeah, hold it right there. Keep it right there. All right, I'll do my best. Okay. I figured we'll, we'll talk about wrestling at the end if we have some time. Uh, JFed is wondering I, if you're... I know, uh, a lot of information about the uh, the artists I like to follow. Wow. What? Well, it's been a month, you know, I get a lot of good news. What? A lot of good news for the, the ladies I like to cover there. What? April Cushman. What? Uh, Katie Dobbins. The, um, what? Amanda McCarthy. And a little bit of Jasmine Mann. Yeah. Oh, Jasmine Mann is in the mix now. Wait, a, wait a minute. Who do, Who did you leave out? No, he said he said the majors. Those are the those are the ones that I like to follow. Uh, Jay Fed uh, asks in the chat room: Is he eating dinner? Is that the problem, EZG? Are you having your <laughs> dinner? Oh uh, no, not right now. No, because it almost sounds like uh, you just ate a peanut butter sandwich. But uh, all right, uh, well, if you're ready for your entertainment report, I can. Uh, I'll go ahead and hit the music. Let's see if I heard this time. I lost the old phone. I couldn't hear it. Something else is playing, and I, I don't I don't actually trying know. Trying to put him to sleep? Oh, oops. I accidentally played this. It's called Another Rainy Day in Sweden. Yeah, I know I say rainy like days and Mondays and carpenters. See, this would make nice hold music. Sure, says, don't let a little music. rain get you down. Mm. That would make <laughs> nice hold music. Uh, I don't know if you or Jenny say that. <laughs> All right, here's uh, here's your music, Easy G. Okay. You want to know about stock market crashes, COVID-19, drive-bys, celebrity gossip? Easy G's gotcha. Entertainment report style. That's why I'm easy. I still can't hear it. Nothing but a G thing, baby. Are, are you ready for stock time? Let's find out. Ready? Ready? Let's go. Can these hold the phone upside down? Maybe. I still can't hear it. Oh. Flip your phone around the other way. See if that works better. <laughs> no, I don't know. I just can't hear it. That's weird. That's better. That you is can hear you my, now. With my new phone, I can't hear it at all. Uh huh. Oh my. All right, easy. Say a technical issue. Well, I call your tech guys and figure that out. <laughs> That's right. We're going to actually easy G. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to dispatch a technician <laughs> to the assisted living facility in Nashua. A technician is on their way. Good. It's weird, you know, the old phone, new phone, the same old uh, uh, problem. I think it's not the end of the world. Uh, I so, think uh, that, well, uh, I think Bruce has sabotaged you. Now, yeah, but. Well, I see you're going you're to be impressed. Uh, give it uh, all your first I can dedicate to. A, first of all, I, I kind of knew a little bit because I, I always like to throw the 10 bells on Facebook. I get, they'll give it to anybody. It's their website. And it's Adrian Street passed on. 83 years old, a little long life. Adorable Adrian Street. By the way, EZG, uh, just a quick update. I just received a text alert from uh, my technician. <laughs> uh, uh, his name is, is is Bill. He's on his way, but he wanted me to tell you that uh, do something about Bruce. Keep him away because Bill is not only a technician, but he is an expert and very accomplished in hand-to-hand combat. So he's ready oh for. Boy. So if Bruce tries to get in his way at all, uh, I've, I've just got to say it. Uh, Bruce will suffer uh, some terrible consequences. That's not a threat. Oh I'm just telling you uh, what to expect. Yeah, true. But anyways, I, I'm going to give a shout out to this other fellow that came to the nursing home with uh, Crystal. Comes every Thursday to do some music. Uh, Sunday, yeah, music. And she brought her buddy, Mike Rosio. Mm-hmm. Played the I call him drummer boy. And he learned his craft at Berkeley, which is one of the best uh, places to learn music in the whole world. Not to do this there. And he went, he's almost all done. Music, ther- music um, therapy, yet. Yeah. He went to school for that. And he's a veteran. 
So he's looking to, uh, oh yeah, his next step is going to Alaska, believe it or not. He's helping the veterans with uh, some issues, and he's going to do some uh, music therapy, probably, you know, the hospitals or wherever he goes to that. So, wow, he's moving all the way to Alaska. Quite a story. Uh, Bill, the technician, has just alerted me. He has arrived at the facility, and the staff won't let him in. And he tried to tell them that uh, uh, that he's there to uh, to uh, give you technical assistance. So he might have yeah, to. You, uh, secret, you need a secret password to get in. So. Uh, yeah. Well, what is it? Uh, tell me the secret password so what? I can let him know. The password. Yeah, uh, what? Six six six. <laughs> oh. That's the number yeah, of the beast. I thought you'd be impressed time that I actually got the whole name for the shout out. Because sometimes you, I throw a shout out to Mike and you always say. Who's Mike's name? What's his rest of the day? If I said this time, I got to write his whole day of doubt, so I figured you'd be impressed that way. Uh, Scott Robin, what? Uh, Scott Robinson in the chat room says, "Eric, can I get a shout out, please? I'm having a bad day." All right, shout out to Scott Robinson. And oh, his wife too. Why not? Perfectly done. You're truly a professional. Even with the yeah, sleeping music. Uh, anyways, the um, we'll start with the uh, oh yeah, Jasmine man. He's playing uh, this went this third. This Saturday, I'm rusty here. Uh, Wild Road, uh, I wrote down here. Uh, rusty, not, oh, not. I'm really uh, starting up lousy. Oh, the Hob Night, yeah. Wild Rover, 811, August 11th. Yeah. This Saturday, 7 to 9. If you want to hear some good music, and yeah, check out a fun place to hang out. God knows I went there a couple of times over the years. Did you get all that, Jody? Right here in Manchester. Did you get all what? that? Did you get all that? What? Uh, by the way, what? Uh, Mancini Skyfall in the chat room says, Bruce, this Bruce, that we said. Oh, my. Oh, boy. Mm-hmm. Well, anyways, getting to more important things. The uh, <laughs> man McCarthy is working on a new album uh, still. And he said it's coming out in, in uh, soon. But she's got a new song. It's getting released what date is, but it's called Normal. And you can go on all platforms to pre-save it. And I tried to do that, but I didn't get anywhere. So, no, hopefully somebody else can get there. But it's coming soon. I'm assuming this month, but who knows? Uh, Eric, uh, I just received a a message from uh, Bill, the technician. Uh, He has informed me, and I'm going to spare you the details. I don't want to alarm you, but apparently some blood has been spilled in the reception area at the uh, facility. I I don't know if you could hear a ruckus. Uh, And if you did hear a ruckus, I wonder if you could describe the ruckus, uh, please. Yeah, well, I'm I'm upstairs. uh, I don't don't hear the ruckus. Yeah, there's no ruckus upstairs. That's good. All right, well, move on to more uh, more important now. Information now. I might have heard that guy, a lady, uh, Katie Dobbins. We're gonna play that song uh, after the event. Yeah, okay, I'm rusty. After the, the report, just because I can. And it's a new song. And it's, oh yeah, we release another song. So yeah, two new songs. It's available on all Spotify, Apple, and all platforms. The other one is music. Uh, yeah, it's when seasons change, and that came out in end of May. So. A lot, a lot. She's uh, busy, busy. She's got a lot of, uh, gig- oh my God, I'm rusty. Gigs coming up August 12th at 1.30 p.m. at Avril House Vineyard in Brookline in live music summer series. And it's a uh, yeah free event. And she's playing, uh, here we go, August 27th of the month at Job Lane. It's a free event, Farm Museum in Bedford, Maine. We got a lot of gigs coming up, but uh, oh yeah, here we go. Another one, August oh. 18th at five o'clock. The Mills Farm Marketplace Outdoor Summer Music Series in Mer- Meredith. That's another free event. And it's playing way at the end of the month. Song right around that. Really, really, really like these things with Red Daisy Revival and another group called Paramount. And they're playing at 5:30. This complimentary um, wine tasting at six o'clock. Oh, 5:30 doors. 5:30 to drinks. Six o'clock doors, seven p.m. So inside the lot at Herman Woods, and there's a, there's a ticket price ten or fifteen dollars. Pretty reasonable. Now I, I'm still concerned yeah. about this. Uh, this Herman Woods uh, is that uh, is that a place? Uh, is it named after a guy named Herman Woods? Yeah, uh, what is called the lot at Herman Woods? Maybe it's, it's, a, it's a restaurant. I'm assuming it's a park. Well, that would make sense, right? It's a restaurant. It's a restaurant. The restaurant is, is the restaurant named Herman in a Woods. Park? Oh, is it I'm in a park? It, I've never been there. Have Have you been there? What? No, no, that's why we were asking. 
I actually got more gig coming up. LA's very busy. Oh, good. That's very busy. Who are we talking about? Here we go. Flipping the pages over. Turn the page. Yeah, and then she's Drop got some uh, gigs coming up say. soon, soon. Mm -hmm. August 13th, 3 o'clock, the Sunflower. Um, Learn that on so, the morning. Uh, mm -hmm. Canterbury is Sunflower, S-O-I-R-E. Soiree? Yeah, Soiree. She's also playing at 1 o'clock on August 19th, the same place. And then she's playing in August 27th. So this seems like a nice place. 7 p.m. to free. Oh, both events are free. How do you know it's a nice Crest place? Hotel Lounge in Portland, Maine. Have you been there? He said and, it looked uh, nice. He the said other it. gigs are in September, so we won't talk about that next month. Just because it looks nice doesn't mean it is. It could look nice, and then you get there, and it's a hellhole. And a hellhole can have really good food. Yeah. Mm, true. You know, just well, I got a good question for you, too, and anybody on the on the Facebook. Yes. When it's, a, when it's a private event, why is it talked about on Facebook? Don't you think they, uh, why is that announced on their Facebook and all their, on their, on their website? It's yes. A, it's a private event. Yes. Why would it be announced? The reason is because if you're, I, I've heard other people raise this uh, question, EZG. It's actually a good question. Oh, really? So yes. you can mush their faces in it. Huh? Other people who aren't uh, in the private party. So oh. You can mush their faces in it. No, that's not the reason. That's oh. a, I mean, that would be a good reason. But no, the reason for that is because you want people to know that you're available for private events. And it kind of... Oh, I never thought of that. And it, it, and it makes you look busier. So for marketing purposes, it just helps enhance the uh, idea that you've got a lot going on. So it's just an image thing. It's, it's a good idea. All right. That's great because the... Um... Yeah, you know, all three artists at one time or another had some private events. All three ladies do. Maybe they're uh, secretly hoping you'll crash the event. You are easy yeah, G course, after yeah. all. April Cushman's got a lot of gigs coming up and all in mis miscellaneous stuff. And on August, she's real busy with new songs here. August 13th, which will be uh, coming right on the corner. A song called Borrowed Time. And you can pre-save that on all the platforms too. And I listened to some of it. Wow, well, she's always great songs and that's, she had smoke. She had more than a truck. Now she's got borrowed time. That's great. I and like then that. She's uh, going to be back at the GOAT on August 28th and September 1st at Manchester on the patio Monday. That's a free event. Oh, yeah. This is a kind of a crazy thing. Like, you, know, you guys were, were obviously involved in music now on the show. It's great. And she played, well, she was going to play on August 8th for this guy, Jelly Roll, which I saw him on TV and some kind of uh, country music awards. And the guy's kind of a, kind of a, I don't know. He has a lot of tattoos, but I didn't really like his music. Oh, he looks like a at the hooligan. last minute, he decided hey. that he didn't want April Cushman opening up, Jackie. so she got she got canceled. Really? Do you, yeah. Do you think? Do you know why? Did you do some uh, marketing back in the day when you were part of a band? Why would they just like cancel all of a sudden? I he, she, he canceled not not the Bank of New Hampshire. I don't know. Uh, maybe someone. Thank you, Billy, I'm sorry. Maybe someone uh, thought uh, we'll free her up so she can go play a show at Herman Woods. Maybe somebody's sick. Oh, maybe. Yeah, because this was a. Uh, this was a. Um, Hopefully, nothing a, bad. Uh, happened. Great show for it was it was sold out, and uh, this is, it was just weird how they just cut her at the last minute. They cut her. Well, that's that's wrong. Yeah, I think she, they don't need an opening band. Oh, oh, <laughs> they cut her from the show. Yes. Well, uh, these things happen, EZG, in the uh, world of entertainment. The entertainment industry, it is yeah. ruthless. Yes. And we got another big show coming up. And as far as I know, the tickets available at Joe Nichols for ticket information. Um, oh, yeah. You go on the website. Um, here we go. Oh, Mansion. The, the, oh, my God. I'm rusty here. You go online to the um, mansontherange.com. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm messing this up. The range, God, the range mansion dot com for tickets. There's a four ticket. Yeah, man, there we go. Range mansion dot com. The four ticket limit, and uh, general admission tickets are forty eight plus shipping and handling. Fifty five the day of the show, and this is the one where you can get great seats. I guess you probably get music. You probably get oh, sky bus. You probably get you know waiters and waitresses coming to the seats, and you can buy four tickets for five hundred dollars. These are the VIP wow. seats. Four tickets for five hundred dollars. That's a yeah, it's a six PM show. That's a bargain sorry, at half the price. Here. Doors are at six and seven PM show. And the tickets are still available for this show it's next we, month, uh, September twenty fourth, Indian Ranch. Who are we talking about Eight again? Eleven shows Amy at Grant. noon. Amy Grant? He said Amy Grant. Oh, Amy Grant? Yeah, Zach Brown Tribute Band, oh. Trailer Trash, Garth Live, Andy Bros. And um they're all available at Indianbranch.com to buy the tickets. 
And uh, oh yeah, these shows are last month. We don't talk about that. No, let's and not live in the past. Of flying, oh, real soon here, August 9th. Mm-hmm. Busy lady here. Newberry League of Crossman Fair. What if I want to borrow and a that's a free event. machine? Mm. Oh, I didn't write down where. Oh, it's Newberry, okay. <laughs> it's 6 o'clock, Manchester Backyard Brewery. It's right around the corner for you guys. Wow. August 11th, that's a free event. Then the next day, she's playing the Hobbit in Kentucky. It took a cider company in 4.30. That's another free event that she's playing up in Maine. Portrait, I think they call that. That's where um, um, the other fellow there does the music. Um, I can't think of his name. He's going to be laughing. Right, the music. Well, you know the guy that does the... For, the uh, no. I'm rusty here. The, the Thursday Entertainment Report. Rob Dion. Rob Dion. He plays up there a lot. He's listening. to had a good laugh here. In August 24, the 6 o'clock back to Hompton in the Kentucky Chamber of Congress this time concert. Your full band will be there. That's another free event. And she's playing the next day a Norgressive. Joint session of Congress? Yes. Yeah. N-E-R-R-A-G-E-N-S-E-T-T. Oh. Find out what it means to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah, Rhode yeah. Island. That's another free event. It's called the uh, Bonner Shore Beach Club. I think all these. Uh, the next day at six o'clock, the Londonderry Pipe Dream Brewing Company with Brand, her buddy Brad Mucker. That's another free event. Oh. And the next day, she's playing twelve noon at Killington. Another free event at the Rivershed Acoustic Brunch. Cool. But this you lady is really busy. A lot of good busy. stuff. A lot of free events. Which is good. Yeah, you found well, a of course, lot of you, good when stuff. you go there, you, they have a, a, um, a situation where you have your um, donation thing, and then you a donation. Um, Oh my God, so Rusty, you have a donation, you can throw donations into her uh, pot there. And of course, you always want to tip your waitress and waiters. Who are we talking about again? And what pot? Be, uh, April Cushman. Oh, I thought we were talking about Amy Grant. She plays at restaurants and stuff. Wrong Amy. Oh. Keep up, man. So that's it. That's it for the, um, for the, uh, oh, oh, no. the, the um, people out there singing. <laughs> but now we can discuss a little bit, uh, a oh. little bit of the rustling. Of course, you guys won't, won't believe what I wrote down here because nobody saw it. But it, it's funny. I wrote this down. Oh, what? Take it or leave it. Roman Reigns w- will win on SummerSlam. And I said, Jimmy You're a psychic. Uso comes out of nowhere. Pulls, well, he pretty much pulls line J in the uh, to make a soon brother versus brother on September 2nd at Payback. So stay tuned to see if I'm right. Of course, nobody saw that. So you can take that with a grain of salt. But that's what happened. I didn't think that was going to happen. You are clairvoyant. He was nowhere. He pretty much beat up his uh, his brother, and then the uh, next thing you know, uh, Roman Reigns Terrible. speared him, and it was one, two, three. Wow. Yeah. That was a good match, though. Did you see? I uh, saw you said you saw SummerSlam. Did you see the whole match? Yeah. Yes. Well, that's like 35 minutes. That's unheard of these days in wrestling. Uh, well, not lately. The Roman Reigns matches tend to go a long time because they, they start slow. Ooh, but you don't and... see that very often anymore. I mean, the women's match is only last like seven minutes. Ronda Rousey, or Ro- or Rousey, but uh-huh. here she's uh, taking a break. One of the one of the female is off, was, but was she has really a small dinner home. Yeah. So I probably said that. Uh, I can't remember which one. The the, tri- the triple threat. The triple. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that match was long. I think she's taking a break and maybe a permanent break. According Ronda, to the, uh, Ronda Rousey. Or the the, the um the stuff online where you take that. But she has a small dinner home. Probably wants to take time off. Like I said, she don't need the money. Blah, 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 you know? Right. Blah, blah, blah. blah, blah. blah. Eloquently said. But it was a long friend. event, though. If I want to stay up, it would last until almost midnight. Uh-huh. And then they had the press conference at LA until like 1 a.m. But, of course, I watched the whole thing off and on on Sunday because you can always watch it lighter or 10 years from now or five years from now or next Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Once it's on Peacock, you you can watch it over and over if you choose to. That's right. Kind of mm. pointless, though. But you know who wins. Why would you want to watch it again? So. Um, Mike the- from Queen City Cabinetry in the Facebook live chat has a request. Uh, Mike says, can Eric do with his, uh, with an announcer's voice, the, uh, let's get ready to rumble. Can you, can you do that, Eric? Okay, I can try. Let's get ready to rumble. Oh my well goodness. Done. Well done. You sound just like well Michael Buffer. Almost as good. Uh, okay, we'll go, we'll go through, uh, we won't really discuss number three that much because, Either people have seen it, or I don't want to get too much spoilers out. So yes, and it's it's, it's over now. So we'll, we'll move up to the next couple of pay per views here. 
Oh, yeah, the AEW wants to talk about them a little bit, but they get a big event on August 27th on pay review. They're going to be in London. So that should be really interesting. Yeah. Well, MJF thank you. and Adam Cole are going to wrestle for the belt. Well, thank you, Easy, for waiting till Monday to say anything and not trying to give us the spoilers before we had a chance to watch it. Unlike right, well, we know other Roman people. wins. That's a, mm. that's a, mm. that's a, uh, that's a, uh, Everybody probably knows that by now anyway. So. Uh, Scott, but the rest of the matches, I, I like to see them. Uh, I don't want to give them too many more spoilers. So. Uh, Scott anyways, Robinson. That should be uh, interesting. AEW mm-hmm. over at uh, London <laughs> and MJF and Adam Cole. They seem to be buddies right now. But when it comes to the match in London, I don't think that buddies help? will be anymore. I, I don't think, I, I don't know. But do you think Adam Cole could uh, beat MJF? He's a pretty good wrestler. Yes. No, that'll be an excellent match. Uh, Scott Robinson in the chat room says, uh, has Eric mentioned uh, Texas Mike karaoke extravaganza coming up this Friday on the uh, Entertainment Report? I don't recall. Oh, no, you, you already announced it. No, we didn't. <laughs> that was your job. Well, anyways, we'll go through the list here. It's coming up. They're all on Saturdays now for some strange reason. Uh-huh. But, uh, well, yeah, the, uh, yeah, September 2nd is payback, and then October 7th is fast lane. Well, I'll get to that in a minute. When uh, he must have been tired of um, Triple H, he said the next pay per view is is um, oh backlash. And he was wrong. He must have been tired. It was after midnight. Yes. It was weird too because the original asked questions about Vince McMahon, but he answered some questions, which was kind of weird. Really, nobody talks about that guy. And he, I guess he had he had a spinal surgery, which doesn't sound he did the he, best news. He just had seventy seven years old. He just had a spinal surgery. Yes. Lucy, they never asked questions about Vince McMahon. I thought that was odd. I think he was just tired. They couldn't remember the next pay review name. It was after midnight, you know? Yeah. We didn't watch the uh, did a press conference. Well, he's allowed. We all make Anyways, mistakes. And then, and then the next one's coming up, the virus series. And they always used to have that on Thanksgiving, but not anymore, I guess. Mm-hmm. And, of course, we don't want to talk about this one. I'll just mention it once. The Jewel Crown, the member for Saudi Arabia, you know, and the, I mean, I'll watch it and stuff, but I'm not a big fan of them going down there. It's just some money grab. Right. Crown Jewel. I only mentioned that once, and I'm not going to mention it ever again. Uh-huh. Okay. Because they, they didn't allow, uh, one last one, I mean, they didn't allow, uh, in the beginning, uh, when they started wrestling in that stupid place, they wouldn't allow the ladies to wrestle, which was ridiculous. Right. right. Well, there's been uh, significant and progress. They to do it, but they have to be, they have to have no more of those, you know, Risque clothes, they have to be fully clothed. And, right, right. You know, this it it seems like it's, it's it's not a good environment. They 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 grow though, they make a lot of money. They do. They, yeah, they speaking of money, uh, uh, Triple H said they're making more money than they've ever had before. Every time they go to places, they sell more tickets. And oh, the business just rolling in the money. The business is the healthiest it's been in uh, twenty years. Uh, they they just uh, that was the most profitable SummerSlam uh, they've ever had. Well, don't you think so in, in your head, though, that every time it's more, um, as my mother was, no, it's, yeah, like, it, every time they have an event, tickets are pricey more, pr- more pricey, so the more tickets they sell, I don't know. Uh, Melanie in the what chat room. What do you think? Yes. Uh, Melanie in what? the chat room says, uh, oh, thank God, wrestling talk. Melanie loves uh, wrestling. Oh, good. Well, we'll end it with this. The um, oh. those press conferences. Every every. Did you see the press conference from different pay reviews? Or if you listen to that, what press conference after this after the um, SummerSlam or the, after no. some of the pay reviews? They have a press conference now. Have you listened to that? No. No, we didn't watch that. I didn't even it see so it. Fake. Like offered. It was probably it there. It's so just... fake to me. You, you, uh, and do you have Peacock? No. Yes. That's how we watch okay, it. Okay, well, if you have time in your in your in your busy schedule, listen to the uh, SummerSlam press conference. It looks so fake. Ah, uh, okay, we never okay. had those press conferences before, and they only allow like three questions, and then then the guys out of there or the girls out of there, and it seems it's, it's, well, after you listen to it, you can uh, you you look after you listen to it, you you understand if it's or not. But I think think it's fake. You know, the questions are just fake. I don't know. You, you, I don't know that. It just looks fake to me. I guess after you listen to it, you on the, I listened to a couple of them. It just you know only three questions, and it just I don't know. It just looks fake to me. So the word of the day is fake. Yeah, fake. I don't know. I could be totally wrong, but I was just thinking that. Yeah. After listening to all these press conferences, it just looks like it's you know 
fake. It's kind of um, yeah, it's fake. It's fake. You know, this fake. Doesn't, doesn't look real. What? Like when they have a real press conference, you know, in the NFL, and they ask questions, and it just looks more. I was like, no, no, just I don't know. I could be totally wrong. Oh yeah, we're gonna wrap it up in here with NXT. They have No Mercy coming up September 30th. No data yet available, but Halloween Havoc. A lot of these events were, you know, from WCW. Uh huh. And then a new one called Deadline. So those are all on Peacock, too, as you well know. All right, so that's enough of my uh, shenanigans today. So I could play that song. I would greatly appreciate it. <laughs> we will do that, Easy G. Music. All right, thank you. Talk to you later. All right, bye bye. All right, we will. Uh, wow, that was uh, quite the. Uh, boy, I learned a lot. Uh, that was quite the entertainment report from our friend EZG, and we will honor his request and play. Uh, we do uh, we do love Katie Dobbins. Very, very talented. My dad is a big fan. Uh, so we will play this track. This is called Just Because I Can, and then we will be right back with plenty more Matt Connerton Unleashed. Don't go away. With a tempting grin Shivers through my skin I feel good when I'm with you Hold me close and I start to lose myself Right, there you go uh, on request from our friend uh, Easy G Eric Agnan just because I can uh, from uh, Katie Dobbins that might have been a, a world radio premiere actually I'm not sure that's ever been uh, played on the radio before 
But uh, this is Matt Connerton Unleashed. We are live from the studios of WMNH 95.3 FM in glorious downtown Manchester, New Hampshire. Uh, Coming up at uh, 5 p.m., we're going to have the world radio premiere of the new uh, Vero G track. It's called Gone Too Soon, and uh, she's going to be Skyping in uh, to talk with us about it. Um, it's a, a beautiful song, but it's, it's as one might guess again from the uh, title, a uh, uh, sad uh, story behind it, but, uh, but that's going to be coming up today at 5 PM. Uh, if you, uh, if you'd like to get in with a call, the studio line is open 603-250-6007, 603-250-6007. You can also text us at 617-917-4476. I'm on social media at Matt Connerton. You can email me, Matt, at mattconnerton.com. And, of course, you can interact and opine in the Facebook live chat. But the best thing to do so that we can hear and enjoy your dulcet tones is to give us a call at 603-250-6007. We'll say hello to everybody in the uh, Facebook live chat. Uh, uh, EZG is in the uh, chat room. Uh, Miriam Banish joins us and says, good afternoon. Uh, Jenny, I see that you're in there. I'm everywhere. Uh, Mike from Queen City Cabinet rejoins us. Uh, Mancini Skyfall, who I'm going to take a wild uh, guess, is probably from Greensboro, North Carolina, uh, says, uh, Good afternoon, hashtag Jen Coffee and hashtag Matt Connerton. We say we are not W equals Subaru no more. Oh, a, ch- a rebranding, if you will. And then I guess Isaac is gone, too. Isaac Banks? From Greensboro, North Carolina? The very one. I, I'm I, I'm shocked at this, I say to you. I hear he has been a hacketed. Oh, my I goodness. Oh, my. Uh, Mancini Skyfall says, We are now known as Mancini Skyfall, a new singing group quartet name. Oh, very Hashtag exciting. Hashtag wonderful. Very exciting. Uh, Jay Fed, of course, uh, we mentioned earlier, is in the chat room. Uh, Mancini Skyfall says, we are from Greensboro, North Carolina. No way. Also, we will get a tornado watch in Guilford County of North Carolina. My goodness. Uh, We will get a chance of scattered storms possible for us in Greensboro, North Carolina. It will be a risk. Here, too, we say. We're Here doing too. we're doing the weather now on the show, but from Greensboro, North Carolina. That doesn't help us. Uh, Mancini Skyfall uh, is now our weather correspondent in uh, Greensboro. Uh, and uh, also says, we say, that is good name of us, hashtag Matt Connerton. Hashtag Jason, glad oh you my. like the name of us. <laughs> and Jay Fed says, I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> That's, oh, no. That's funny. Uh, let's see. Andy Barker uh, joins us in the Facebook live chat. We don't see Andy in there too often from the uh, Nothing's Off the Table uh, podcast, assuming Andy is uh, still doing that show. Uh, let's see. Nice to see you, Andy. Hello. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, uh, Man- I want a cupcake. Mancini uh, Skyfall says, hashtag Jen Coffee. We say, how's it going? It's going good, but now I want a cupcake. Why? Because Eric's talking about cupcakes. Oh, I see. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Chocolate. Mancini uh, Skyfall says, we say, what's this? The Bruce Technic show? We don't think so for us. Hashtag Matt Connerton and hashtag Jen Coffee. We say that is so true. Hashtag Easy G. We say recording artist Amy Grant, who uh, Easy G was talking about during his entertainment report. I'm not sure why. We say awesome, and she did a duet with Peter Cetera song, Next Time I Fall, in the 80s. That's right. I do remember that song. A big duet with uh, with Peter Cetera. A lot of people were mad at Amy Grant in the 80s because uh, she had always been a gospel recording artist, you know, Christian contemporary, and then she uh, started doing secular songs, uh, more mainstream, and uh, people got mad. She had that uh, that song, Baby, Baby. That was oh, her yeah. first uh, single, and... Uh, some to people think that was considered risque. Yes, yes, very satanic, actually. Uh, mm. That song. Yes, uh, Andy Barker says, <laughs> "Oh man, don't get me started on MMA martial arts." Uh-huh. Uh, uh, I, 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 that might have been uh, in reference to uh, Ronda Rousey, or it might have been in reference to our, uh, Bill the Technician uh, having to uh, uh, beat up the uh, staff at the assisted living facility at which uh, EZG is currently uh, housed. Um, I just got a follow-up message from him. Apparently, uh, uh, he's uh, rendered everyone in the uh, reception area unconscious and is approaching EZG's room uh, immediately. Uh, let's see. 
Oh, uh, Andy Barker says, Ronda Rousey is a one-trick pony and is total trash. Oh, my goodness. <gasps> That's a hot take right Ooh, there. Ooh, them there fighting words. It's a hot take. Mm. Uh, let's see. Mancini Skyfall says, we would like to give a shout-out to A.J. Cook, an actress from TV show Criminal Minds. She is awesome. Hi, hashtag AJ Cook, we say to you. How are you doing? Oh, my goodness. Can you imagine if AJ Cook, who I've never even heard of from that show, uh, sees that and then becomes a fan of this show? It'll be like we're, uh, by extension, in a weird way, famous. Um, isn't that mm. what happens if somebody famous notices you? You become famous? Really? I hope so. No. Not necessarily, no. Oh, darn. I don't uh, think it works that way. They don't, like, rub off on you. Oh. You have to actually do this thing called work. Now, there's a little bit of, uh, <laughs> there's something in here, too. This might cause some controversy. Oh, no. Mancini Skyfall says, we heard that Texas Mike is the manager and producer for a pop singing group, uh, Quartet, New Force of the Spark, we say. But here's what uh, Mancini Skyfall not realized. And by the way, this is 100% true. Friday night on Retro Spectrum Radio with Pauly C, Texas Mike was in the chat room and publicly declared that he was resigning. He did. Resigning as uh, the manager yes, and producer did. for New Force of the Spark. That I is did true. I see that with my own eyes. And that is verifiable. Yes. Uh, Melanie, of course, mm. we mentioned is in the Facebook live chat. Hello. Uh, let's see. Hello. Uh, Darling. Scott Robinson said, uh, this is regarding Easy G complaining about the press conference after SummerSlam. Scott said, wait a minute. Are you telling me there's something fake in wrestling? Come on. Stop it now. Mm. Don't go messing. Uh, let's see. Uh, and uh, Rhonda Favero uh, from California, the great state of California, just joined us in the Facebook live chat. Uh, if you'd like to join us, uh, 603-250-6007, 603 603- 250 The studio line is open. Um, by the way, we'll probably get to it in the second hour after we talk to Vero G, but there's... Uh, <laughs> I, I'm still feeling... I mentioned on the show Friday, I'm, I'm still feeling uh, some of that uh, uh, TFS, but it's unavoidable. We'll have to talk about it. What? You know TFS? No. Trump fatigue syndrome. What is That's a new term it's already, to me. It's already setting in. I think I invented it. Oh. But I'm feeling it. I think that's what's making me Is so it catchy? tired. But we'll probably. Oh, jeez. We'll get. We'll you get. Couldn't warn me. But we'll 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 at least hold off till later in the show. There's something Maybe supposed to be. Suit. There's something happening today at 5 p.m. with that. Uh, we'll stop we'll, it. We'll get to that later. What there is? I guess that's not. There there is. There's something happening at 5 p.m. I know. I know. Ugh. Well. This is. They're down. That's right. They're down to what is it? 11 minutes now. They got 11 minutes. Have they done it? I don't know. I, I haven't seen anything come across. We'll get to that later, though. Okay. Something non-political uh, that I that did get, uh, catch my attention. I've kind of been following this. Um, there's a lot of, you know, when the pandemic hit, uh, a lot of people began working from home. Companies began to uh, let their employees work from home and so forth. And, you know, the old school term is telecommute, but uh, I don't think anyone says that anymore. But people working from home, and of course, we live in an era where technologically that's easy enough to do. And um, But this is from uh, Yahoo Finance. Even Zoom is making its staff return to the office. Interesting. Zoom, uh, this is uh, an irony to it, of course, because you would think Zoom... They'd be the, look at us. Yeah. Everybody's home. Zoom became, you know, the, the technology that even though Skype, of course, had already been forever, but uh, around forever, but Zoom really uh, became at the forefront of facilitating uh, people to be able to work from home and have Zoom meetings. and But uh, but there's been a lot of, um, and I've got a, a couple articles on this, there's been a lot of uh, discussion uh, in recent months about how maybe, because for a while, the, the, the new uh, idea was that actually this works out really well, having people work from home, but now some companies are saying, mm, actually, it's not working out that great. And apparently Zoom is one of them. It says here, Zoom, the company that powered the remote work revolution during the pandemic, is telling its employees to come back to the office. In a statement, Zoom said it is now enforcing a structured hybrid approach, meaning that employees who live near an office need to be on site two days a week because it's most effective for the video conferencing service. 
the company said in a statement, quote, as a company, we are in a better position to use our own technologies, continue to innovate and support our global customers. We'll continue to leverage the entire Zoom platform to keep our employees and dispersed teams connected and working efficiently. Uh, putting aside the irony, Zoom is not included, uh, I'm sorry, excluded from the return to office trend. That's sweeping tech companies. In recent months, Google, Amazon, and Salesforce have enacted similar policies ending a COVID-era approach that gave employees more freedom to work from home. However, businesses have faced some pushback from employees after workers grew accustomed to greater flexibility. Even the White House is cracking down on remote work. Last week, it asked cabinet agencies to bring federal workers back into the office more frequently in the coming months, according to an internal email obtained by CNN. Um, and it kind of goes on from there, but, um, there's a story now CNBC Now it's, it's interesting because there's, there's some very different ideas about all of this. CNBC had a story from, wait, what's I'm looking for the date on this. Oh, uh, from March. So this is a few months ago. CNBC had a story. Uh, Full-time office work is dead. Three labor experts weigh in on the future of remote work. And some uh, bullet points from this article. Remote work ballooned during the COVID pandemic. Uh, the share of full-time remote work seems poised to flatline at a level five times that of 2019. Workers and companies have reaped benefits, especially in so-called hybrid agreements. So... Um, the people, uh, the experts quoted in this article seem to believe at that time, and maybe they still do. I mean, there's obviously different ideas that, um, you know, that, that going to, to an office every day, that that whole concept is dead. But they may have been wrong. But hybrid work uh, does seem to be, that seems to be what Zoom is going with. It's just that they're not going to let their employees stay home all the time. They're doing a hybrid model. Well, they think they were saying they had to come into the office twice a week if they, yeah. were, if they were near an office location. Right. So it's not completely going away, but yeah. if you're close enough to come to the office, you got to show up a couple of days out of the week. Yeah. I don't think that that's so much to ask from a company. I mean, personally, I just don't... I get it, though. Like, if you're, you've gotten so used to it, this is what we've been doing. Yeah. But I get it. Uh, Melanie says in the chat, I love working from home and I'm lucky that the plan for me uh, to continue doing this five days a week. Uh, the plan is for me to continue doing this five days a week. Uh, Fredo uh, joins us in the chat and says, I've been working from home for over a year now, making a decent wage and I have more flexible personal time than ever. I'll never go back. I don't blame you. No, yeah. I don't blame you. You know, and, and something I've talked about too on the show is um, how for me as a hypnotherapist, um, with the pandemic, uh, I, I was always resistant to doing uh, remote sessions. You know, I was used to seeing people in an office setting, but uh, or going to their homes. But uh, people got used to, you know, with the rise of telehealth, because all of a sudden, uh, you know, doctors' offices were very limited in what they were doing. So people got used to doing sessions online. Yeah. And so I had to adapt to that too, and I'm actually glad that I did. But it, it works out pretty well. Um, but, um, but you don't use zoom. No, I use a platform called doxy.me, which you're familiar with. Yes, I am. And, I uh, have a provider that uses it, but it's basically, it's, it's the same, same technology. If you can use zoom, you can use doxy. It's really easy. Uh, Fredo says in the chat, I've worked in several industries and tech is my future. I think it's the smartest way to, uh, the smartest thing to be in right now. Um, and Miriam says, I think remote sessions are great. Yeah, no, it works out very well. Because the client gets to still be in their home environment where they're most comfortable. Yep. You know, and as long as they can hear me, as long as they can hear me, I can uh, do the session with them. So um, let's see. There was another story. Um, oh, uh, Yahoo Finance has another story that says it's time to admit this is a quote from a former PayPal executive who says it's time to admit that remote work doesn't work. So this uh, this executive uh, says it uh, does not uh, believe in re remote work, um, and says it's not a great way to build a company is what uh, what he concludes. So there's there's a lot of differing ideas out there. Uh, Fredo says uh, the best therapy sessions I've ever had uh, have been via Zoom. 
And Miriam says, I really like not having to go out. It cuts all the travel time. Oh, yeah. I have two other uh, providers who use Do Oh, Miriam says I have two other providers who use Doxy. Yeah, it's very, very convenient. And, um, you know, and that all, all rose because of the pandemic. Yeah. So, and I always say, too, with the pandemic, we're lucky in a sense that it happened when it did, when, the, uh, when we had the technology to really uh, handle it. Uh, Shannon's calling, but this is going to have to be a quick one because we're almost at the top of the hour and we have a world radio premiere. Hi, Shannon. Hello. Hey. I'm Hi, gonna... Jenny. Hi. Shannon. I'm... It sounds to me like there needs to be a study done. Well, I think they're at. I think... on, on the remote um, stuff, some people like it, some people don't. Some say it works, some say it doesn't. I think there needs to be a study. Well, I would say, Shannon, there is a study uh, that's been happening in real time. I mean, there's there's uh, there's all this uh, knowledge and all these opinions uh, uh, about, uh, I mean, we were kind of forced to have a big study because of the pandemic. You know what I mean? Right, right. But somebody didn't get the numbers. Uh, all the people that were stuck at home, uh, well, not all, a lot of, uh, a lot, some, most of people, some people went and got Rescue dogs. You know, they, they adopt a dog. Mm -hmm. Now they're home with the dog all the time. Well, now they have to go to work. Now the dog's going to have a problem. True. I, I was looking at it from the dog's standpoint, no, I guess. No, that's a that's a valid point. You're right. Um, yeah. yeah, there are a, a lot of people in that uh, situation, or you know, or they or all, babies, or they already had pets, and they were who, and the pets got used to having their uh, their humans around. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it's, um, if, if you're, if you're, if you've got employees who are used to working at home and all of a sudden you're telling them that, uh, they either have to go back to the office or they're going to do the cyber thing. Yeah. It's going to be an adjustment. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and right, I just want to put my two cents in. Yeah, no, I appreciate it, Shannon. Thank you for the call. All righty. Take care. You bye got bye. it. Bye-bye. Yeah. I mean, opinions will vary and everyone's situation is different and every company is different and, um, Oh, here's a new name in the uh, Facebook live chat. Uh, Susie Spencer says, uh, I work on the road as a regional manager in the UK and working online saves so much time per day. I don't lose eight hours traveling uh, to have iced meetings. Now I can have several meetings per day and be far more productive. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, I think for a lot of people, it's uh, it's actually been a godsend and... Hmm. Um, but I've I've known people too who have said you know, not not everyone. I mean it's like anything else. You know, not not everyone can adapt, and some people uh, and some people adapt very well. And there are some things that you need that physical environment. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So yeah, I mean it's good for some things. I I like telehealth for some things. I like being able to just do that check in with your provider if you're not gonna. You don't need anything and you're just doing a quick check-in. I think it's great to be able to do that from home and not have to, to go in. Oh, absolutely. But then I'm also speaking as somebody who doesn't drive. So for me, getting to point A to point B is a little more complicated. Right, right. All right, we are uh, approaching the top of the hour. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a very quick break, show some love to our amazing sponsors. And then we're going to go from that right into the world radio premiere of the brand new single from Vero G called Gone Too Soon. And then uh, and then we're going to have her on with us via Skype to talk to us about the song and, uh, and however much she wants to reveal uh, about the song. Uh, obviously, it's a very, as you could tell from the title, it's a very personal uh, very personal track. Um, but uh, she'll tell us about it, or as, again, as, as much as she wants to get into. So really looking forward to talking with her. She's an amazing person. She does a lot of stuff, as, as you pointed out earlier. Uh, so we're going to do that. Uh, so that's all coming up. So uh, we're going to take a quick break. Don't go away. Plenty more Unleashed to come. Come on down to the Hop Knot at 1000 Elm Street, Manchester's premier craft beer and gourmet pretzel bar. Tell us more, Trudy. We make our dough fresh every day. We make a variety of styles of pretzels and serve craft beer, cocktails, and a few bottles of wine. We do the traditional pretzel, and we have multiple flavors for that. We also do stuffed pretzels, pretzel sandwiches, free dessert pretzels, and pretzel knots. The Hop Knot in the Brady Sullivan Plaza at 1000 Elm Street. Bring your kitchen to life with Queen City Cabinetry. 
located at 87 Elm Street in the historic Sunbeam Mall in Manchester. Open Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. and Saturdays, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. They can be reached at 603-222-2007 or on the web at queencitycabinetrynh.com. Come see the possibilities. Queen City Cabinetry, another proud sponsor of WMNH. Clemento's, Clemento's Pizzeria, family friendly, awesome for a date night. Clemento's, Clemento's Pizzeria, for delivery call 603-782-8450. Clemento's Pizzeria, the best pizza in town. 1875 South Willow Street in Manchester, New Hampshire. Best cocktails around, come in as friends and leave as family. This hour on WMNH is sponsored by CGI Business Solutions, located at 5 Dartmouth Drive in Auburn. They serve all your business needs, including employee benefits planning, corporate design and business administration, investments and wealth management, and customized business insurance solutions. Their phone number is 866-841-4600 or on the web at CGIBusinessSolutions.com. WMNH, rip the knob off. There it is, Gone Too Soon, the world radio premiere here on Matt Connerton Unleashed. And uh, Vero G is on yeah. the uh, Skype with us. Hello, welcome back to the show. Thank you guys for having me. I'm just honored. I'm, I'm, thank you so much, guys. It means a lot. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, Jenny is here with us as well. And uh, hey, Jenny. Th- Hi. Beautiful song. Hey. 
Thank you. <laughs> when uh, now now is that that's obviously available online? Is that uh, did that just come out? Yes, uh, it just got released around the end of July towards August, and uh, it's available at all digital platforms. You know, Spotify, Deezer, Tidal, Apple Music, all those places. And uh, do you want to do you want to talk to us about um, what it's about? Obviously, it's a you know a very personal song to you. I don't know. I don't know how much you want to say about it, but um, I know. Sure. It's, but uh, yeah, uh, go ahead and uh, uh, tell us about it if you would. Not a problem. Uh, so about a year ago or so, I um, had a situation in my life personally where I didn't realize until now looking back, I did. Um, I unfortunately had um, miscarried, and. During that time, it was very difficult for me. And now, uh, after a year later, actually, they just made the one year mark this month um, that I, I decided to finally release the song, and I have put my heart and soul into this. And a big shout out to Real Earth Productions uh, for making this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful uh, production on the song. And a big shout out to Eddie as well. And, you know, we actually, actually, big shout out to Gemini Stacks, who actually is listening right now. And we just did a docu-film based on my story about, you know, losing a boy child and the impact of how afterwards and how to heal during that time. Mm -hmm. And it's out now. Uh, you guys could check that out on my YouTube channel on the Vero G Spotlight Network. Um, you know, a lot of people have been touched by this already. And the song is very, actually, as we see right now, you guys are just finding out now on the show live. Uh, we just reached on um, Spotify alone over one point. Uh, eight K streams on oh. the song, and it's yeah, and I'm like, this is crazy. <laughs> wow, congratulations! Thank you so much, appreciate it. Yeah, I just uh, I don't think uh, I don't think I've even shared this with Jenny yet. I I just uh, I found out uh, recently. I have a family member who just uh, had a miscarriage. Oh no! Yeah. So no, you didn't tell me. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it is something. Obviously, you know, it's it's a very relatable uh, song and subject, uh, Vero G, because it's it's something that uh, so many women go through. Um, and um, is it, why why do you think? Um, I mean, obviously, it was. You, you said this happened a year ago. Yes. yes. What, what what was it about uh, about wanting to do this now? What you be, obviously, you know, there was a, a, a span of time there before you decided to. to uh, uh, write and record this song. Um, d did you have to go through some sort of a grieving process first before you were able to do that, or is this is this part of the grieving process? Making this song is this is this closure? What's what's kind of the the uh, thought process to doing this now? Yeah, sure, definitely. I I felt um, it was the timing uh, because you know after finding out uh, such a loss of the situation. Um, it's not right to do a song when you're just grieving through something that's very personal and dear to you. So I feel like I have to give it personal time for myself and for my family and my loved ones. And to, to personally deal with this situation, which is very life, is lifetime. You know, it's just, there's a life you're going to remember, you know, there was a possibility of having a child and things sometimes are out of our hands. So, you know, with during that time, I just felt like everything was just timing to, to put this out and then to also celebrate my, um, well, I, I, you know, when people say, oh, you know, if you, you know, miscarry whatever, you'll get another one. It's like, it's not a puppy. This is his life. Right. This is something that you created, you know. So with that in mind, I decided to put this out for this month as well in August in celebration of, um, it would have been made a year uh, as we speak. So it was a celebration thing for me. I felt like it was the right time to have. Um, Susie Spencer in the uh, chat room says, loved that song. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> uh, she says she's had four rounds of IVF, five pregnancies. One of them was natural. The other four were IVF, and none of them came to term. Oh, wow. That's got to be heartbreaking. Yeah, I've, I've, known, uh, I've known women who, who've had uh, children who, who do go through, uh, who, who've gone through a number of, and actually uh, some friends of mine, um, I think they went through four miscarriages, and then they, uh, you know, they were trying to have, uh, they were trying to have a daughter. I mean, well, that, I mean, that's what ended up being a daughter. And then, uh, oh. and they had given up. They had completely given up. And then finally, um, by you know, without even trying, uh, she got pregnant again. And and finally, uh, uh, was able to bring the baby to term. But yeah, it can be, um, it can be really uh, challenging. Um, yes. Do, do you do you have other children, Vero G, or would this have been your first child? 
No, no. So I, I do have, prior to the situation, I do have a child. That he'll be actually turning 18 in November this year. So oh. he's almost an adult. Yeah. <laughs> he's just, like a teenager to a man. So yeah, he's yeah. almost, yeah. Yeah, but uh, this is actually what would be my second child, if full term. Oh, okay. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, do you uh, do you plan to try again, or, or or has this experience kind of changed your the way you feel about it? Um, honestly, I'm still in the very delicacy ages uh, stages. Sorry, um, on this matter. So right now, it's not a guarantee if that's all. But if down the line, if something does happen, then that's a blessing. I'm gonna leave it to God's hands. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, and by the way, so the last time we talked, uh, you had a, a lot of different things going on. Yes. <laughs> um, do you want to kind of uh, catch us up on what you've been up to? Because you are a very, very busy person, which is uh, something that Jenny and I admire about you is that you do so much. And and uh, but uh, what's what's been going on in the world of Vero G? Oh, God, so much. All right, let, me, let me make it short and sweet. <laughs> and I appreciate you guys. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Definitely, definitely. So, uh, yeah, so first and foremost, I want to announce it here on the show. Uh, I am actually, this year, uh, for the 7th LDM Award Show, it's an independent uh, award show they do every year for artists, you know, you're like the top, you know, they do what they do and get promoted or, you know, voting and that sort. And I'm announcing here on the show, guys, I am the Gospel Artist of the Year for 2023 wow. for the 7th LDM Awards. Yes, for Let Him Heal You, that song, it got it won. I'm excited. Prior to that, uh, people, I you guys could vote for me. Actually, nominated for uh, it's called Midwest, I believe, Industry Conference Award Show. This is the first one they're doing this year, and it's taking place in Tinley Park in, in Chicago. And you guys are more than welcome to vote for me. Uh, I think voting in soon. I'm actually nominated for host slash radio personality of the year, which I found out. I was like, mm. oh my god! So vote for me for that. Actually, I just found out as well. I just got nominated for five nominations. Uh, it, I'm just I'm, I'm very astounded. Like uh, for the Hollywood Awards, if you don't know, I, I'll just send you guys a link. You guys can share it, you know, yeah. to your friends and everything. Um, so it's just amazing to see these amazing blessings are coming. Prior to that, uh, you know, I got other things lined up for music. Actually, uh, I'm dropping my fifth EP album hopefully soon called Energy. Uh, that has a lot of great sounds, different uh, eclectic dramas in there. So definitely stay tuned. I'll let you guys know when it gets out. Uh, you know, working on some other things. That's what you're doing a back-to-school event coming up next week in the Bronx. And a big shout-out to Devil Dog USA and um, Mr. Uh, Tyree Goodman and um, Mr. Gary and everybody part of this. is a big event we're doing for the school, for the kids and that sort. And we're just doing a lot of great community work. We're continuing on to more things and just more blessings and more and more things to come. Absolutely. And are you still doing the radio show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're still there. We're still there. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, thank you. Thank Excellent. you. We're, we're, we're trying. We're trying. <laughs> and then now, do you have any, um, do you have an ETA on when the, uh, on when the next EP, you, you said you're working on that now? Uh, right now, actually, it was delayed last year because it was just dealing with some paperwork for us stuff right now. Yeah. So I'm trying, I'm definitely, so I'm, I'm definitely trying to get that out by, I kept saying July, but then the like, other things happened, so I had to push it back again. Yeah. So I'm gonna try to say like maybe latish August to maybe early September. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, not bad. Not bad. Okay. Thank Very you. good. Very good. Um, well, listen, uh, Vero G, uh, we always uh, appreciate you and and uh, mm-hmm. all that you do. And like I said, I, I like that you keep so busy. That's very cool. And um, great, uh, great track. We're actually when we let you go in a moment, we're actually gonna sure. play. Uh, we're going to bookend it with uh, the song that we previously had done a world radio premiere for, uh, the radio edit, of course, of your track, yes. uh, uh, Toxic, <laughs> uh, which, uh, which got a lot of, got a lot of uh, positive reception. Um, Thank you. But uh, let's remind people, too, uh, where should they go online to keep up with everything that you're doing? And, and of course, uh, the, the new song is on Spotify and all the platforms. But uh, what else should people know as far as where they should go to keep up on everything that uh, everything happening in the world of Vero G? Sure, not a problem. Uh, you guys can follow my Instagram. That's uh, official at official Verogi. Us all together. Uh, you go check my website uh, com. You can also check out my artist page. It's Verogi, but it's if you look it up, it's at v e r o twenty eight eighty four. And pretty much you guys can find me everywhere. Just look me up. Check out my music it's on all digital platforms. And I 
thank you so much, guys, for having me back on the show. Appreciate it. Absolutely. And before you go, too, uh, Susie Spencer has a very specific question. What's her yeah. rate? What's her radio show? Sorry, new listener here. She's awesome. No, oh. no, it's okay. Yeah, <laughs> Thank <yeah>. you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, not a problem. It's Vero G Spotlight Radio Show, and that's at DTF Radio. Uh, that's an online uh, radio show. Yes, yeah. yes. Oh, and uh, Gemini Stacks is in the Facebook live chat and said that as well. Yeah, the Vero G Spotlight Radio Show. Yeah, yeah. I've checked. I've checked that out. Uh, DTF Radio. Um, our friend uh, uh, G Girl, who I think is how we might have met you originally. Yes. Uh, yes, yes. 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 I know. I know she was doing some stuff with them too. So great stuff. All right. Well, uh, Vero G, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, I'm going to let you go, and then I'm going to hit this uh, this other track, uh, Toxic. But. Uh, uh, we wish you continued success. Congratulations on all the streams of the new single. And uh, let's uh, stay in touch and do this again soon. Definitely. I'm honored. You're in. <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs> all right, my friend. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. You too. Bye-bye. All right. Very good. Always nice to talk with uh, Vero G. And uh, we're going to play this. This is the uh, the radio edit of uh, Toxic, who we had done. Uh, we had done, I think, I think it was back in earlier in the year. I think around, around March or April, we had done the world radio premiere of this track. Uh, so we're going to give this a spin, and then we'll be back, and we'll get into some more stuff. Plenty more to come. Matt Connerton Unleashed. We are live. Don't go away. Check this out. Real Lyrics Production. Toxic 
get it. Got hella enemies looking for my downfall. When I see the death of me, finally get my lick back. Show them what a boss do. Really had a hard life. Ish, I be going through. Never never be starting with me. But when I pull up, nowhere to be seen. If I get my girls, we stomping you. BX in the building, what to do? Freaky leak every day of the week. My man with the hot sauce technique. I throw fit. Living how I wanna live. Ain't got no time for a grown woman doing big bang. Champagne, I never change. Toxic, you take it over, over me. Draining my energy. Why you playing with me? Toxic, you take it over, over me. To the Hop Knot at 1000 Elm Street, Manchester's premier craft beer and gourmet pretzel bar. Tell us more, Trudy. We make our dough fresh every day. We make a variety of styles of pretzels and serve craft beer, cocktails, and a few bottles of wine. We do the traditional pretzel, and we have multiple flavors for that. We also do stuffed pretzels, pretzel sandwiches, free dessert pretzels, and pretzel knots. The Hop Knot in the Brady Sullivan Plaza at 1000 Elm Street. Bring your kitchen to life with Queen City Cabinetry, located at 87 Elm Street in the historic Sunbeam Mall in Manchester. Open Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. and Saturdays, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. They can be reached at 603-222-2007 or on the web at queencitycabinetrynh.com. Come see the possibilities. Queen City Cabinetry, another proud sponsor of WMNH. Clemento's Pizzeria, family friendly, awesome for a date night. Clemento's Pizzeria, for delivery call 603-782-8450. Clemento's Pizzeria, the best pizza in town. 1875 South Willow Street in Manchester, New Hampshire. Best cocktails around. Come in as friends and leave as family. This hour on WMNH is sponsored by CGI Business Solutions, located at 5 Dartmouth Drive in Auburn. They serve all your business needs, including employee benefits planning, corporate design and business administration, investments and wealth management, and customized business insurance solutions. Their phone number is 866-841-4600 or on the web at cgibusinesssolutions.com. WMNH, rip the knob off. Welcome back as we are well in our number two numero dos of Matt Connerton Unleashed. And we are live from the studios of WMNH 95.3 FM in glorious downtown Manchester, New Hampshire. Also on Comcast 97 if you're in Manchester. And hello to all of our online listeners across the nation and around the globe. You can go to my website, mattconnerton.com, for all of your live streaming options, social media links, contact info, show archives, etc., etc. Uh, today is Monday, August 7, 
2023. Jenny is here as well at the news desk. Present and accounted for. Yes, yes. And if you'd like to be with us, uh, you can join us at, uh, call us at 603-250-6007, 603-250-6007. You can also uh, text me at 617-917-4476. I'm on social media at Matt Connerton. You can email me, Matt, at mattconnerton.com. And, of course, you can interact and opine in the Facebook live chat. Uh, but the best thing to do so that we can hear and enjoy your dulcet tones is to give us a call at 603-250-6007. Uh, by the way, uh, Gemini Stacks in the Facebook live chat says, I love the show. Thank you very much. We appreciate that. Uh, Isaac Banks uh, says, good afternoon, Matt Connerton and Jen Coffey. How are you doing? Uh, I'm here, <laughs> Matt Connerton and Jen Coffey. I am here. Yes, yes. And uh, Isaac Banks also says, good afternoon, hashtag Randall Arrayl. <laughs> How are you doing? I miss talking to you. And so, as my friend Michael Broadhurst. Yes, we've, we've heard about uh, Michael Broadhurst uh, occasionally uh, on the, uh, in the chat room. Isaac Banks also says, also, I would ask you both if you can check out my Facebook page is Eichmann Breezy and Matt Connerton. My nickname is Eichmann. Ah, that's good to know. <laughs> oh, my. And uh, uh, Isaac Banks uh, was also asking uh, how you're doing. And uh, we will uh, we'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, but uh, act well, actually, let's. Oh, we are fine. By the way, uh, Mike, sorry, Mike from Queen that, City Cabinetry said good song. Uh, I assume referring to uh, Toxic, the radio edit, of course, that we just played uh, our friend Vero G. And today we did the world radio premiere of her new single, uh, Gone Too Soon. Uh, so, uh, And if you missed it, we did uh, speak with her uh, via Skype, uh, which actually it starts out rough, but it, it, it got a lot better. The quality got a lot better, uh, but uh, always nice to uh, speak with her. So, But... Uh, yeah, let's uh, uh t give us an update there, uh, Jenny. I'm fine. Oh, <laughs> sorry, I was just being a wise guy. Yes, actually, um, a pretty excited day. Actually, um, those that have been following the story know that I've had to be. I've been battling my Medicare disadvantage plan to cover the needed treatments and medications that I need on a regular basis. I finally made some headway this year, and then we ran into more roadblocks. But uh, thanks to Senators Shaheen and Senator Hassan, I am now the proud owner of a prior authorization fully approving my infusion therapy, including the companion meds that are supposed to be delivered. That came in the mail today, and I was pretty shocked and excited to get it. It's really interesting to hold that in your hands and see it in black and white that, oh, yeah, they're going to actually cover now. Um, still in a battle with them on the whole in-network, out-of-network thing. Um, I'm trying to find out what is the onus on the insurance company when they don't have an adequate um, network to offer you? Because the uh, particular doctor we're talking about only is the only doctor in the state of New Hampshire that does my treatment. So I don't have a network to choose from. He's literally the only guy. Yeah. Um, and the insurance company doesn't have anybody to offer me that's in network. So why should I have to jump through a zillion hoops to be charged at an in network rate when they should be doing it when they don't have a network to offer me? So that's a question I have out there that I'm trying to get an answer on. And I'm going to keep plugging away at it. Um, we're learning a lot as this goes, as far as how fighting the insurance companies about filing appeals, about filing for, appeals of the appeals i mean it's really been a battle it's daunting and it's frustrating as heck when you're especially when you're dealing with the insurance company because you're talking to people that don't understand anything you're talking about you're talking about an illness they don't know you're talking about treatments they don't know they have zero medical knowledge yet you know these are the people in charge of trying to put forth the information of whether or not you get approved or denied treatment and that's one of the biggest problems that people face with these Medicare Advantage plans is running into roadblocks that the insurance companies make impossible to climb over for the average person. You know, I have medical knowledge and, um, yeah, I've been drowning in this, absolutely drowning in this. If I didn't have help, I don't think I would have ever gotten this far. And it shouldn't be like this. No. It shouldn't. We pay our premiums. We pay our co-pays. We pay everything that we pay. And then we end up carrying the full bills for treatments and medications because they find out that more stuff to take a step out of. 
So it's a constant battle. I'm not giving up. I'm excited that the infusions are finally getting covered. Um, and I'm hoping that we're going to have a better answer down the road on not having to continually fight this way. But uh, it, it definitely serves a purpose to point out that we need to pay attention to who we're sending to the hill. Mm -hmm. um, these are the people that are giving these private for-profit insurance companies the ability to make money off of our pain and suffering. They collect our money, but they do not pay our bills as they are supposed to. So we need to change that. And the only way to change that is some of these fools that are up there in, 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 in the Capitol need to go away. Um, thankfully, our senators are on the right side of this issue. They're 100% in support of health care for everybody. They have been fighting for me and for others. But they shouldn't have to. And they can't do it for everybody. So the only way to do this is to change the laws and change the way that insurance works. And that has to start with getting these private companies the heck out of the Medicare business. They don't belong in it in the first place. All right. Well, very good. Well, there we go. Well, so there is progress. And uh, Miriam Banish says in the chat room, that's wonderful news. Yeah. And uh, she also said, oh, I know about those hoops. Sheesh. I, I know. You've had to do them yourselves. I don't know anybody who hasn't had to fight with insurance on any, whether you're a Democrat or Republican. If you've got somebody who's sick in your family, you know what they've gone through. Yes. It shouldn't be like this. And it's only like this in America. Well, yeah, uh, Susie Spencer in the chat room says, move to the U.K. We have free health care regardless of condition. I'll yeah. tell you. Um, national Health Service. I accessed national health care in the Netherlands, and I was amazed at what the availability was. And then watching my friends get health care, there's never a question. The doctor says you need the med, you get the med. Yeah. Nobody's going to deny you or, or try and up the price that you can't freaking afford to pay for it in the first place. The doctor says you need treatment X. You get treatment X. Not in America. Oh, no. We don't think that that's a good. I mean, people get turned down for treatments because the insurance company decides they're not physically. They don't think you're physically able to go through the therapy. So they'll right. deny it. Right. You know, it's these are the battles that we are fighting because of the stranglehold they have. And we have got to pass laws to get that undone. They've they've just weaseled their way in too deep. Yep. It's awful. Um, oh, uh, well, here's some uh, some good news. Uh, Isaac Banks in the chat room says, good news, uh, Matt Connerton and Jen Coffey. I will be going back to the Sunshine Club at St. Pius Catholic Church in Greensboro, North Carolina on September 1st. Does this mean he's not hacked anymore? I don't know. Very exciting, though. Um, it, it, did you have anything to, to, to add, uh, though, on, on what you were saying, or should we move on? Or You know... The only thing I want to add is the, all these pundits are coming around now. You know, everybody's coming around trying to get your vote, trying to get you to pay attention to them. Ask them point blank where they are on health care. Ask them point blank on whether or not they're going to do something to stop the bleeding of Medicare into these private insurance companies' pockets. You know, they, they actually get like $74 billion a year that they get to keep in surplus of Medicare payments. And they pocket them for profit. You invest that money right back into Medicare and watch this. Everybody's got eye care, hearing care, dental care. But no, we're too busy building yachts for rich, snobbish, pampered elitists. Mm -hmm. yep. I think I'm done now. Okay. For today. <laughs> no, no, for well, today. well said. Oh, uh, Isaac says, I'm not hacked anymore, Jenny. Okay. Very good, very well, good. Well, your hacked profile uh, uh, blocked people, so you have to go check that out now. 603-250-6007 <laughs> uh, is the number if you'd like to get in with a call. 603-250-6007. The studio line is open, and we're here for about another uh, 27 minutes or so. Um, hey, I have just a quick thing from uh, Mediaite.com. You know, um, I, pe people have heard me, uh, and some people don't like it, but uh, people have heard me, uh, especially these days, <laughs> uh, use the term whataboutism quite a bit. You know, whataboutism when you're uh, when you criticize uh, someone for doing something and they happen to be someone you don't like. And then someone uh, who does like that same person will say, oh, yeah, well, what about what this person did? And uh, my my biggest problem with whataboutism is aside from I don't think it's a particularly uh, uh, intellectual way to discuss uh, politics. Um, uh, is that if you follow whataboutism through to its furthest logical conclusion, then basically you reach a point where no one can ever be held accountable for anything. 
Yeah. And you might as well just throw up your hands and say, okay, well, I guess it's a wild west because if someone you don't like does something bad and all that some has to happen for is, uh, you know, for someone who does like that person to say, oh yeah, well, what about this other person? They did something bad too. Then I guess you just have to let everyone get away with everything. But um, what I do want people to understand is I realize that whataboutism is used by both the right and the left. Oh, absolutely. And I have a specific story here about it happening on the left. The reason I'm, I'm bringing this up is I just want people to understand, you know, because people get ideas and <clears throat> we live in a, a political climate where people kind of expect you to be all the way on one side or all the way on the other. So... When I criticize the right, uh, people assume, some people, uh, trust me, I hear from them. <laughs> they, they, assume, you don't say. They, they assume that I'm not willing to hold everyone to the same standard. No, I absolutely am willing to hold everyone to the same standard. And I think uh, no matter who does it, it's, uh, it's a bad way to discuss politics. But if we just happen to live in a climate where there's a particularly high degree of it going on on the right. Because, you know, if you're on the right, you, you have to defend uh, Trump and and uh, but it does happen on the left, too. So I just want to present an example just to show I am fair. Uh, I saw this uh, pop up today on Mediaite.com uh, filled with what about isms. Chuck Todd asks Jamie Raskin about Hunter Biden and gets Trump and Kushner answer instead. So here's an example of somebody on the left doing it. Uh, Chuck Todd asks Maryland Democrat Representative Jamie Raskin about Hunter Biden and influence peddling. Uh, somewhat indirectly on Sunday's Meet the Press, but got an answer about Donald Trump's son-in-law, Jared Kushner, and quickly moved on. Uh, Raskin, a member of the January 6th Select Committee and lead Trump impeachment manager, spoke with Todd about the most recent Trump indictment. Raskin was on with Todd after Trump attorney John Loro's contentious appearance, one of several on the day, uh, and the two covered some of what Loro had to say, along with Raskin's view on how special counsel Jack Smith's investigation has proceeded. When they moved on to electoral politics, Todd asked Raskin about the coming what about isms, saying Republicans, quote, are going to talk about Hunter Biden a lot. Uh, I know that the uh, a lot of the technical defense of the president with Hunter Biden is, well, the president didn't do anything wrong. But as Michael Kinsley once said, the real scandal in Washington is not what's illegal, it's what's legal, unquote. That's what Chuck Todd said. Uh, that example was a segue to a broader question. He said, quote, again, he's asking Jeremy Raskin this, quote, should there be a code of conduct, something for family members here? Uh, because it, the appearance of what Hunter Biden did is it's not good, unquote. They both acknowledged that influence by family connection is a thing in Washington, D.C. Then Raskin pointed a finger at Republican chairman of the House Oversight Committee, Representative James Comer, saying that the GOP chose, quote, to just pursue the Hunter Biden thing as a one-off, as a way to score cheap political points. Uh, he doesn't want to talk about Jared Kushner, unquote, said the representative who didn't want to talk about Hunter Biden. <laughs> Todd did not ask whether that was a whataboutism, despite having introduced the question that way. But he did then ask why, quote, a thrice indicted former president is neck and neck with the current president, unquote. But Raskin deflected on that response as well. Um, I actually have the clip here. Maybe we'll uh, maybe we'll listen to this because he doesn't uh, he doesn't answer Chuck Todd's question. He just kind of uh, pivots. Yeah, here it is. What about isms? We know the Republicans are going to talk about Hunter Biden a lot here. Um, and I know that the, a lot of the technical defense of, of the president with Hunter Biden is, well, the president didn't do anything wrong. But as Michael Kinsley once said, the real scandal in Washington is not what's illegal. It's what's legal. Should there be a code of conduct, something for family members here? Because it, the appearance of what Hunter Biden did is, is not good. Yeah, I mean, we know that there is a lot of, um, you know, influence in Washington that's based on people's family connections. Last and names ties. matter a lot on K Street, as you know. You know, and I have um, repeatedly asked Chairman Comer on the Oversight Committee for us to look at that in a serious and substantive and methodical and nonpartisan way. But he's per instead decided to just pursue the Hunter Biden thing as a one-off, as a way to score cheap political points. He doesn't want to talk 
uh, about Jared Kushner, who brought back two billion dollars, not million, two billion dollars from Saudi yeah. Arabia to a company he created the day after the Trump administration ended, when there is still blood all over the Capitol. Let me ask you this. Why do you think a thrice indicted former president is neck and neck with the current president? Well, it's a great question. I wish that Lincoln were around to pose it to him because it's his political party that they've dragged into the mud here. Anyway, but, uh, you know, he doesn't directly answer the question about Hunter Biden. He wants to talk about Jared Kushner. And you're 100 percent right that both sides do that, that that yeah. what about I would really love for somebody to just answer the question without trying to point out. Let me see. You're, you're talking about a crime or a, or a suspected crime. Let me give you a different crime to try and deter your attention. Right. You know, it's be it, oh, they all do it, and I hate it. I hate it with a passion. I hate it. Yeah. Like, it just, and that's part of why Trump is neck and neck right there, because he will just say whatever, because he doesn't have a fear of anything that he says. People like that. Mm -hmm. They like blunt honesty, raw honesty to excess well if you say i mean seriously of, of course there's other things involved in this i'm, I'm simple i'm oversimplifying but it is a point to what your question was of why he could be neck and neck mm -hmm. well <laughs> um Susie spencer in the uh, chat uh, says can i uh, can i ask please out of genuine international interest because she's in the uk is trump still really going to run given the recent indictments uh, what is the public opinion uh, some three years after his presidency of his competency? Uh, please know I have no opinion either way. I'm just uh, curious as to the U.S. opinion now. Yeah, um, he's uh, he's running. He will uh, almost definitely be the nominee. And uh, he has been able to convince his supporters who support him no matter what that uh, uh, he's he's actually getting indicted on their behalf in other words yes you know he's he's doing it all for them <laughs> they're and, indicting uh, me because they can't indict you and they and they believe <laughs> it they eat it up and uh oh, yeah. yeah i mean i'm your sacrificial lamb he'll definitely be the nominee and and in theory could even uh could even be president again Which is awful he could literally legit get elected president be behind bars elected president and then pardon himself it is that possible. That could happen. It is possible. Um, and as you pointed out in the chat room, uh, there is nothing uh, There is nothing in our laws to prevent him from running. He could get elected from behind bars. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, he'll just pardon himself. Uh, Isaac Banks uh, says, Trump, Trump to Trump, ex-president. Oh, man. Some good insight there. He never stops <laughs> giving, does he? Uh, Susie Spencer says, really, does that not make bad precedents for a bad president? Oh, it makes a bad precedent in a lot of ways. <laughs> and if, you, if you're asking me, am I embarrassed? Yes. Yes, I am. Uh, Miriam said uh, social psychologists are probably studying it all. And, and, and psychiatrists are coming up with new DSMs for what you're going to have for an ailment from this. Um, let's see. There's now, gonna be some kind of syndrome. Now I did mention <laughs> earlier there's supposed to be it was supposed to happen today at five right. in court. Nothing has come out yet. I have been oh, okay. I keep refreshing and refreshing. I've look I've got a couple of places open that I'm waiting for anything to come out now that we've gone past that five PM deadline on uh Trump's attorneys having to answer to the judge to the request of the prosecutors to basically do a gag order of sorts um, or a, uh, a restraining order forbidding him from talking about certain things. But given his most recent comments, are um, they looking for a complete and total gag order now? I wonder. Because he's, got, he's only gotten worse, not better. They say don't talk and he goes worse. Well, I'm wondering if I was saying, is it Suze, S-U-Z-E? I guess because the Z was capitalized, I, I figured it was Suze. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Sorry. Th this is what uh, CNN is saying. Uh, Trump argues against more restrictive rules over evidence in 2020 election interference uh, case. Yeah, because he, he had uh, said something over the weekend on Truth Social about if you come after us, we're coming after you or something. And... Um, you know, uh, Jack Smith is getting death threats and, and so forth. The, the, the difficulty for the prosecution, I think, though, with that is 
it's really difficult to prove that that's what Trump means because, uh, I mean, you can certainly infer that. I certainly do <laughs> what his intention is with that. But how do you prove that and that he doesn't mean, oh, John Hopwood says the judge isn't going to rule today. Oh, maybe they've uh, They had to that. answer by 5 o'clock. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah, they were oh, hoping okay. to, well, some of the stuff I read indicated that uh, he was trying to drag it out for like a week. Yeah. Make that like a week thing. See. And again, they're like, nope, 5 p.m. I'm having hard, I'm, hard stop. I'm having trouble keeping track of it all. See, that's again, that's that TFS. That's part of it. That's that TFS I was referring to earlier, that Trump fatigue yeah, see, there syndrome. Is a syndrome. It is. It's so setting make in. its way into the DSM. You, you heard it here first. TFS, <laughs> Trump fatigue syndrome. Well, they used to talk about that at the end oh, of the oh. at the end of the Clinton administration after Monica Lewinsky, you know, even though his poll numbers actually went up because a lot of people thought he was treated unfairly. Uh, but yeah, yeah, people used to talk about uh, Clinton fatigue syndrome, and it's like, uh, okay, uh, we, you know, some of us like the guy, but we're, we're kind of happy that he's going to be going away because Americans do, at a certain point, get tired of uh, a certain uh, degree of drama, uh, and uh, and kind of enjoy the relief of uh, not having so much of it. Uh, John Hopwood says, but the ruling will come later. Uh, Trump had a win in court, defamation suit uh, thrown out. No, that was a loss for Trump, wasn't it? Because it, it was his defamation suit yes. against E. Jean Carroll he, that was thrown yes, out. Yes, he wanted to throw, yes, that's what got thrown out. Yeah, so that's, a, lo his, that's a loss that's for Trump. That's a loss for Trump. Yeah. He was trying to counter sue on her and claim uh, defamation, definition yeah. of character. That got thrown out. Yes. Well, so okay. he lost again, like over 60 some odd cases that he's just consistently. Yeah. Just. Uh, so just to catch up on what's been happening today. So this is from CNN. Uh, former President Donald Trump's legal team has proposed more lax rules than those sought by prosecutors over what he can do with evidence he has provided in the criminal election interference case. In a new, new court filing today, Trump's lawyers lean heavily into claims that special counsel prosecutors are on a politically motivated campaign to restrict his First Amendment rights. Uh, the attorneys said in the court filing, quote, in a trial about First Amendment rights, the government seeks to restrict First Amendment rights. Worse, it does so against the administration's primary political opponent during an election season in which the administration, prominent party members and media allies have campaigned on the indictment and proliferated its false allegations, unquote. Uh, prosecutors have proposed a more restrictive protective order over evidence in this case, pointing to Trump's public statements that they say could have a, quote, harmful chilling effect on witnesses or adversely affect the fair administration of justice in this case, unquote. And that's the other thing that they're saying, the prosecutors are saying about uh, Trump's uh, public statements about, you know, if you come after us, we're coming after you. It's not just about, you know, directed at Jack Smith necessarily, but at, um, or Fonnie Willness in, in Georgia is getting like ridiculous, uh, you know, threats and racial slurs thrown at her and so forth. But also, you know, the intimidation of potential witnesses. Um, <laughs> this is a little bit inside, but Miriam Banish says in the chat room, definition of character is not illegal, but defamation <laughs> of character is. Uh, can we sue Trump for defamation of the American character? Seriously. Um, Trump calls Mike Pence delusional. <laughs> oh, yeah, of yeah. course. He's just a guy. He's going after everybody. Yeah. I do think it's hysterical that Pence is using he's too honest on his gear. Yeah. And selling gear. Yeah. As I do believe that he said that. I absolutely believe it. I do. Yeah, I don't remember I don't remember specifically what it was that uh again, it's too it's getting to be too much to keep track of uh, what specifically it was that Trump asked Pence to say uh, something he asked him to 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 say and then uh, Pence said I can't say that it's not true and Trump responded, you're too honest. Yeah, but, I don't but, know exactly what it was. But yeah, now the Pence campaign is putting out coffee mugs and shirts that say uh, <laughs> too honest on them, which, uh, yeah, that's, uh, you know, for 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 Mike Pence, for Mike Pence, that's a pretty sick burn by uh, Mike Pence uh, standards. Um, I can't find the exact verbiage, and I had it in front of me, and I ubooed, and I... Uh, I closed the tab, so forgive me. But there were other comments that he has made at specifically targeting Jack Smith. 
recently. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He calls, recently. He calls him deranged. So it's not just, you know, it's not just the I'll go after you comment. It's yeah. more than that. Yeah. That he's he's just thrashing out at people and making comments that are going to cost somebody their life. Right. This is not funny. This is not okay. Uh, I guess it's uh, Suze uh, Spencer says a uh, question. Do you ever talk about what is happening in politics internationally? Yes. Uh, yeah, occasionally. Yes, especially, uh, actually, we talked quite a bit about the UK when the situation was going on with Boris. Yes, of course. Uh, and we were watching their parliament quite a bit. And you did, the previous speaker was also really fun to watch. I really liked their, their previous speaker. You remember him? Oh, uh, not the uh, speaker, but uh, what do they call him? Yeah, the the head dude. Oh, God. That's not how you say it, Jen. <laughs> dude. I can't remember his name, but I know who you mean. Colorful guy. No, he was the, he was the speaker. Miss, he was the mistress. He was the speaker. And he'd order, order. And he, he had like no, a I know, greatest voice. I know exactly who you mean. And he had um, some of the best comebacks. It's one thing I love yeah. about the British Parliament is, is they will... They, they're very, they can be very respectful of one another, but they will not go hold back to go after each other, and they react in the room. It's not silent. It's, you know, if somebody says something, half the room goes, here, here, and the other half of the room goes, boo. Like, they're really... Oh, you were right. Yeah, Speaker of the House. <laughs> I thought, I thought, okay. Told you. I thought it was a different title. Oh, you were right. <laughs> Oh, by the way, John, everybody called him Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker. John Hopwood said in the chat room regarding uh, E. Jean Carroll, oh, I thought she was suing him. Yes, but he countersued. She won her suit. With uh, Well, there's a second suit. The, there's a second. She sued. Oh, yes, because yeah. immediately after trial, he went back out and, play, and, and discredited her again. And yeah. see, see, we're going to keep running into this stuff. It's too much to keep track of. <laughs> he, oh, she sued God. him for, say, for this. She won. He immediately walked out the door after losing and started doing it again, attacking her, attacking yeah. her in social media. He goes on. So now she's got a second lawsuit. Yeah, because he goes on right after she wins that lawsuit. He goes on CNN to do that town hall and calls her a whack job yep. and starts saying all this stuff. And then it's they like, never all said right. I raped her when, in fact, they did. Uh, well, yeah. technically, no. The verdict was, what was it? Um I don't even want to. Yeah, get into I don't it. want to get into it either. But it's but it, well, it, seems, it seems like he's just going to keep sticking his foot in his mouth, and she's going to keep suing him. So we'll see who runs out first. I think he's going to run out of money first with all these lawyers he's got, and he's going to need a whole new set for Georgia. He's not even done yet. Yeah. So he's got he's got a criminal trial in New York, a criminal trial in Florida, criminal trial in D.C., one coming up in Georgia. You know, as as much as I like never having to worry about running out of things to talk about on the show. I'm, I'm like, when I talk about this TFS, I'm not even kidding. I'm feeling overwhelmed by it all. I'm going to have a panic attack <laughs> thinking about well, Trump's then, legal problems. <laughs> well, and then we have, we have a, now, wait a minute. I have, I, I have a question. I have a serious question. Yeah. So Trump runs and if he gets reelected, even if he's in jail, you're not helping my panic attack. He can, he can pardon himself <laughs> from the federal charges but that won't help him if he's found guilty oh, in Florida, New York, or Georgia. Dear Lord. Then what happens? Like, he can pardon his federal charges, but he can't pardon his state charges. Oh, what a country like, we live in. how does that work? Where do we put him? We need a special Secret Service jail that's going to be able to be built to hold him and Giuliani and Eastman and all his little cohorts. They'll have their own little lawyers group. Because they're all lawyers except Trump. Well, to paraphrase his co co conspirator. To, to paraphrase Bill Barr, we'll cross. We'll we'll jump off that bridge when we get to it. We're here. We're here. Well, no, we're not. Yeah, we're here. <laughs> we're not not quite. We have a uh, we have a call. We'll grab this. Hi, welcome to Matt Connerton Unleashed. Who's this? John uh, Hopwood, uh, the guy who's going in in three weeks to to get his glasses replaced, which I'm sure you've just seen the. Uh, consequences of wearing these two dollar glasses uh that i stole huh? from joel about 10 years ago no remember joel used to have glasses on the desk on the desk there when he uh yeah was the morning show co-host his reading glasses yeah <laughs> i've got a pair i got a pair and i'm reading i'm trying to read stuff because i broke my own oh glasses i and, see uh, i he, see 
<laughs> I guess I got that headline wrong, huh? And I was reading the headline. Yeah, yeah. No, the, his his countersuit got tossed. Yep. He's lost hey, over 61 times uh, in court. Quick question. You guys can do the research. Is I've never heard of a defendant being gagged or part of a gag order. Uh, usually those are on lawyers. Uh, and uh, uh, cases are tried in the press all the time. True. You know, when you get the constitutional law, you know, uh, Shepard, the famous Sam Shepard case, the guy who was convicted of murdering his wife, which... The, uh, the TV series and movie The Fugitive is loosely based oh. on his case. That was F. Lee Bailey's first big win in 1966 that established his uh, uh, reputation that the Cleveland press tried Sam Shepard, you know, uh, and that he was unable to get a fair trial mm-hmm. because of all the adverse uh, publicity and the Supreme Court agreed, and he, then he won an acquittal later. And uh, mm. so when you're thinking about, you know, when we think what? about Trump, we, there's Trump derangement syndrome on both sides. There are the people that love Trump or derange. Then there are people like me that just froth at the mouth, right? <laughs> <laughs> and anything, anything he does or says, uh, you know, somebody was talking to me about him today. Her premise was just that he's funny. And, oh, right. uh, oh, <laughs> and she gave him a joke. I don't see the joke. Oh, God. John, yeah, I misspoke. Oh, that's terrible. John, I misspoke. I, I don't, you must have missed because I said gag order and then I corrected myself and said restraining order. They're, they're, they want us. But it's a restraining order is a gag order. Eh, but the, right now, to, uh, the restraining order was the originally the gag order. It's his speech, it's free speech. Yeah, the the the, ori- the restraining a, order, the restraining order that was put in place, or the restriction put in place, is that he couldn't talk about the case with other witnesses. Yeah, but other they witnesses. what they're looking for. Oh, okay. What they're looking for is to stop him from being able to disseminate any of the information he gets out of Discovery to the World Wide Web. I think that's what they're looking so for. So what? What? There. Well, uh, I ah. thought that you were talking about him and. The way the press, like, you know, actually, uh, it creeps me out. Twitter is now X. Yeah. And when I go on it, it's like, holy smoke. That X just makes my blood run cold. I'm not in, no, I'm no fan of mine. It's not an inviting an idiot. symbol. You pay for Twitter. Xers and, are like, don't But the go. thing is, you know, I'm just reading <laughs> stuff in Twitter, which is, you know, insipid and I shouldn't do it. And people are basically on the thing that, they're trying to stop him from threatening uh, the pro- the prosecutor. But threatening is a crime. Yeah, but you have to prove that that's his intent, and that's a very high bar. They're- I don't know what to do with this. I really don't know what to. What do you do with this? Well, what do you do with it? You don't want him to incite people know what to, to do kill with anybody. This guy. You know, uh, we've been perplexed since twenty fifteen, or at least twenty sixteen. Matt and I had back to back shows, and we never. Yeah. <laughs> we still don't know what to do. Pence, yeah. used, Pence was the poster child for a Republican prior to this. You know, this doesn't. Make, I mean, it, I'm just. <laughs> I think Matt. I think you're right. You're talking about Trump, I think I'm right? feeling the fatigue right along with you. Yeah. I don't know we're, what to do with it. We're about out of time. We we got to get going. But uh, John, I appreciate. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, but we're it's, we're it's, approaching the top of the know, hour. It's it's this guy is, is so confusing. He's like static on a radio. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> It's like, you can't even figure out what this jerk's up to. So it's like, oh, he's so amusing. He stirs things up. I said, that's not what a president or somebody of that stature is supposed to do. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm thoroughly confused, <laughs> which I'm sure, you know. Okay, take care. Take care. All right, All right John. Thanks for the call. Bye-bye. <laughs> so real quick, the legal team did respond, and they are looking to get – uh, narrower limits to protect sensitive materials, but ensure that Trump's free speech rights are protected. Mm. So they did respond. They did meet the deadline. All right. We got to go. Uh, I know. You want to uh, plug your uh, website or anything before we go? Sure. Come check me out at jencoffee.com, J-E-N-N-C-O-F-F-E-Y.com. And if you're having trouble fighting with an insurance company, you want help with that, like I've done, I know the organization is looking for other people to help. And, uh, oh, and I wanted to mention our musical guests for tomorrow. Oh, yeah.
Well, you've got uh, quite the busy um, little week, don't you? We've well, got. got oh, actually, we've on. got a, We've got a couple of great guests tomorrow. So our musical guest will be Best Not Broken in the second hour. But in the first hour, we have Bob Henley. Yes. Who's going to be uh, calling in, right? Yep. He's from WBAI 95.5 AM in, uh, excuse me, FM in New York City. Yes. Um, and I was a guest on his show. He has got some great stories. He's been involved in politics for a long time. He even worked for jo- for Jackson's campaign. Yeah, really looking forward to that. We, uh, Jesse Jackson. Jesse Jackson. Yeah. Sorry. Jackson's a common name. Yeah. Not Andrew Jackson. He's, uh, I assume, not old enough. Well, Trump would think so. That's true. <laughs> All right. If you miss any part of today's show, it'll be up in just a little bit at WMNHradio.org and on my website, mattconnerton.com. Thank you again, Vero G and uh, uh, Grimrock for the uh, yes. world radio premieres today and Easy G for joining us and everybody in the chat room. Thank you, Jenny. And uh, we got to go. Talk to y'all a little bit later. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.